clutch. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And for the foreseeable future, we're going to be double pumping videos, trying to get as much Awakening the Nightmare content out to you guys as possible. There's so much to cover in so little time, so we're going to make sure we try to uh, upload twice a day for, like I said, the next few days. And, uh, and we'll space those out between 12 and 6. For the Awakening the Nightmare giveaway that we did yesterday, that video or the uh, comment to that video that will be the winner will be posted in Pat's video coming out later tonight around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're looking for that, stay tuned there. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into a Pavium leader breakdown for you guys. And let's go ahead and start this one off. Now the very first leader ability is going to be the Mega Turret, unlocks the long range Mega Turret for construction on build sites. So you can go ahead and place this on any part of your base in an empty slot and it does a good amount of damage. Um, the range seems to be like a Kodiak of sorts where it'll, if you're within range and you have vision of it, you'll be able to shoot it. Um, I, I like this one, this will be a nice way to uh, perhaps barrage an enemy base even more than usual with the Siege Turrets and the Kodiaks. For instance, if you're trying to break someone's uh, Super Turtle or if you're trying to break a late game base hold, then you can simply put that Mega Turret up and utilize a lot of different abilities that we'll get into a little bit later, but there's going to be a lot of good ways to break down um, enemies' uh, fortresses, so to speak, with Pavium's leader abilities, starting off again with Mega Turret. Now the next leader ability we're going to go ahead and cover is Burnout. It's an active power and you activate to a temporary increase of output of all targeted structures and uh, production rate, resource rate, and damage. Notice it says damage. I assume this means that you can pair it up with the Mega Turret, which should be a nice little combination there. And if you go ahead and mix that and you, if you constantly keep clicking, that comes back every minute or so. Um, if you have the ability, if you purchase it, I should say, with your uh, with your leader points, you need to always be clicking on that. You need to make sure that you are always um, clicking on your your extractors or your supply pets because it will give a positive net benefit and there's no reason not to be clicking it. So you just got to start getting into that motion um, to utilize it to the best of its ability. Next we've got Enduring Will. Activate for a slow but long lasting healing zone. This is going to cover a good amount of uh, space as you'll see right here. It does take a little bit longer to heal. Uh, I think it lasts for about 30 seconds or so, but um, but it will include a lot more units. So this is kind of helpful in, uh, in certain scenarios. You can see that it's uh, it looks like the old Halo, um, Halo Wars 1 regeneration. It's got at least the size of, um, or the radius of it, of the old one. And it heals just about the same, not too, not too quick, not too fast though. And, um, and I think I would prefer this one over the normal regeneration, but we'll have to run tests comparatively. But I like the idea that it brings in more units and allows them to heal. Um, I think this will benefit more than having that smaller heal, the one that you have to upgrade several times in order to get it to a normal size heal like you see right here. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the orbital designator and it briefly reveals a small area of the fog of war and I really think that this one is going to turn into a bit of an issue. You'll see a little bit later in the clips, I won't spoil it for now, but you can pretty much with it without upgrading it you can see an entirely upgraded base you can figure out what they're doing what they're producing out of it um, again we'll come back to that a little bit later on why this could potentially be a big problem going forward um, the next one that we're going to go ahead and talk about is rain of fire which is absolutely awesome um, activate to fire plasma beams it has a larger area of effect and long duration obviously if you upgrade it you will continuously get that um, this is it right here you can go ahead and use Orbital Designator and you can pair it up with this along with a lot of other leader abilities and you can do damage to bases without being near them. That can potentially be a big problem. Now the next leader ability that we're going to focus on is the Wraith Invader. Uh, kind of an interesting one. It unlocks the Wraith Invader Infantry Transporter to build at your own base. This is going to be, uh, for, for you guys who are familiar with Arby or Jerome, it's going to be your Mastodon or your Phantom. It's going to simply transport units. And also one thing to notice that it will, or note that it will siphon out enemy um, uh, health bars and it will bring it back to yours. Um, it will start healing your invader. Now it's not going to do too much, it's not going to siphon too much. I don't think it's overpowered or anything like that. At least the way that I was um, trying to utilize it in the gameplay. I had some hunters in that mix and you'll see right here with the hogs. Um, they, do, they do a decent amount of damage. And obviously once, same thing with the, the Mastodon. Once it blows up, those units are fine on the inside and they run out and then they, you know, they deal their normal damage and take their normal damage. So uh, I don't think it's going to be viable in any capacity, just like the Phantom and the Mastodon at least. Not in Blitz, I've heard those are pretty viable in Blitz, but as of right now in standard mode, I don't think it's going to be too viable, but something to consider nonetheless. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and focus on full salvage. It's passive power. All structures self-heal over time. When recycling structures, you receive a full refund rather than a partial one. Uh, the second part of that's not too important, but it's gonna act like combat repair for those of you who have played with Colony in the past. A fantastic leader ability, to say the very least. Moving forward, we've got Pavium Stand. It's an active power. Activate to make all structures invulnerable for a short amount of time. Now, this is actually gonna make every structure that you own invulnerable, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, and it, it might be a little too much, but we'll see about it how um, how it plays out into the meta. Uh, it does last for about 20-ish, 25 seconds, somewhere in that range, um, and you absolutely take no damage. And if you pair that with full salvage, you will start to notice that you will heal your um, your uh, your bases or your structures as well as protecting them. So it gives you a little bit of extra time to figure out what you're going to do next. Uh, good stall move. Now the last leader ability that we're going to talk about today is the Lich Vanguard. Uh, it's an active power. A powerful Lich provides area, denial, and can be used to produce units. You'll notice that it has a vortex that will come out of the center, and you can produce any any unit that you possibly can find. And here's here's some problems that I'm gonna I'm gonna point out real quick with how I think this current meta is gonna roll with Pavium, at the very least. Um, if you pair uh, Orbital Designator with um, with several different things. You'll notice that you can pretty you can rock a base pretty well. You'll see I have my orbital designator pointed out to the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in um, in the Lich Vanguard. I can produce units out of it as many times as I want, and you can see if I upgrade the um, the beam right there, uh, you can do a significant amount of damage to bases to units. Uh, it could be a problem. I think the only way we can avoid this, and let me know what you guys think down below, is having the orbital designator act as a stasis or only usable through observation and not dropping in units. But again, we'll see how this plays out. This is just my um, my early preface um, uh, concerns, and uh, and hopefully this doesn't turn into anything significant. But um, this just some concerns that I've seen with it. Um, thus far, and I haven't even really played with it in the campaign. I'm sorry, in the multiplayer just yet. So, uh, let me know what you guys think if you've encountered this in the in the multiplayer as of yet. And um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And um, are you guys enjoying Awakening the Nightmare? Pat and I just completed the Halo Wars 2 um, campaign. Well, I should say we completed the Awakening the Nightmare campaign. And I've got to say I've significantly enjoyed Awakening the Nightmare more than I've enjoyed the actual campaign. Full playthrough of that coming this Friday. By the way, for any of you guys who are interested in the campaign, uh, live commentary with Pat and myself, we go through all five missions. It's going to be one whole video, so I hope you guys bring your popcorn and are ready. Um, and other than that, like I said, the giveaway is also going to be coming out later today. That's in Pat's video. Um, we'll have a full announcement with that, and then we'll be giving away another code as well. So if you didn't win this time, be sure to check out the next video because you have another chance to enter in, and hopefully you'll get Awakening the Nightmare uh, DLC for free. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.